it was my own pressure for setting my daily tasks and I was hyper focused at that time um, on creating so much busyness and trying to hit so many targets because because I had to get it done because I was the only one doing it and I was the only parent around and I wanted to be successful at work and I wanted to be successful with the kids so I over focused on my task list yeah. and it was a survival method welcome to the from within podcast with Ben Osterveld. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast from within. I've got a special guest here, Aaron Best. Thank you, Aaron, for jumping on the show with me. It is a pleasure to have you on. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to kind of chat with you today. <laughs> well, we need to show the world who Aaron Best is. So that's <laughs> what we're doing. Uh, Aaron and I know we've known each other for years. Aaron, uh, we first met um, it was almost a weird thing to be honest, how we met. Like I, I was I, with my real estate company, I had some extra lock boxes and I had them. I'm like, I had, I, there's a guy that retired. I bought every single one he had and I didn't need 50 of them or whatever. So I put some back on for sale and, and, uh, Aaron said, I'll buy one and I said, or two. And I'm like, okay, cool. Sounds good. And I was not planning to be there. My assistant was going to meet Aaron. I totally forgot she was coming. My assistant had left early for the day and I was sitting in my office and there comes Aaron. I'm like, who's this? She's like, I'm like, who are you? It's like, I need the lock boxes. I'm like, oh shoot, I'm glad I'm sitting here. It was this one of those moments that me and you cross paths that weren't actually, wasn't planned. So I always look at those as kind of a cool universal moment. And within about 15, 20 minutes, major connection happened and we went out for coffee and you joined the one year yes. mastermind business from within. You and sure that is our connection. So where are you at? What are you doing? Let's, let's, let's chat, Aaron. Uh, where am I at right now? Physically, I am in Kitimat, British Columbia. Um, we relocated here last summer with my husband's work. And uh, I told him that if he got permanent employment, I would follow him anywhere, you know, instead of being that contract. Whatever. Not, yeah, right. Just a little bit too uh, much uncertainty, especially with both of us being yeah, independent totally contractors. So I said, you know what, if you get it, we'll go. And yes, to adventure, you know, less house, more adventure, family time, let's do this. So last summer we sold our big house, bought a smaller house and packed up what we wanted to bring out here. And here we are. So July, uh, mid-July last year, we were together as a family for the first time in almost a decade. Because your husband would be doing a lot of out of town work in the oil and gas industry. Yep, for, that's for, Yep. So, it's a, so now he comes home in the evening, every evening kind of thing? Every evening Big and, deal. you know, 5.15, 5.30 when he walks in the door is, you know, hands down the best cool. day. Very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. So that's the good side. Uh, yeah. When I met you, you were, uh, you were a real estate agent in uh, Edmonton, Alberta. And so you literally built a business and then picked up and left. How was that? It was, you know what, it was really scary. I think I was <laughs> foolishly optimistic that, you know, we would just be able to slide the success from one market to another. Um, I gave my, I gave myself permission though to take the summer off when we first moved there to really help with the kids transition and just kind of figure out the community a little bit better and kind of meet a few people too. Um, yeah. You know, because I think it's one thing to launch a real estate business in the community that you have been living in for yep. a number of years. Um, but it's a whole other ball game when, you know, you're not only trying to introduce yourself, meet new people, forge friendships, um, totally. and then their trust to, for business, right? Like it's a whole, you're starting literally from, you know, the ground up. Yeah. So that was kind of like you were, you had a way more optimistic view than actual reality that it hit or hundred percent. I yeah. think, it's, yeah. And you know what? I think it's just because like, I know where my strengths are in terms of um, connecting with people in terms of meeting people. Right. I'm an extroverted individual and finding that common ground to kind of, you know, learn about someone is not necessarily something I find hard. Yeah. Or, you're super good at that. Yeah. So, you know, I really gave myself credit for that. Um, so you're thinking, I'll just come in, start making connections, no problem. Now, the only thing is, how big is Kitimat? So 
Kitimat, for anyone who is in the Edmonton area, Kitimat's about the same population as Morinville. Um, so we're so looking like, what, 30,000? No, 10,000 no, people? Not even, like 8,500. So, so really, you went from a city where there's a million of potential clients to mm-hmm. a city with 10,000 poten- potential clients. Yeah. And so I think they're just scale alone. It's like just the pool is smaller, right? Totally. Absolutely. So, so Aaron, let's, that's cool. So we got to know where you're at. You just yeah. went through some transition over a year and a half ago, you said? Uh, yeah, the last year. Last year you've moved from yeah. there, big move. Yeah. But let's go back to some of these big lessons um, that like, man, when we were coaching, it was really cool. Like you're a tough girl. Mm-hmm. I know that, <laughs> but, but you're not really just like most people. Right. And yeah. because we all have two sides, but I remember sitting chatting and you seem to always have a plan. You seem to always be really strong on the plan, goals. And whenever you, and the pressure around them was the one thing that, that was kind of identified together, the pressure put on yourself to hit the goals and to, to achieve what you've planned. And yeah. there was a moment we just had this, this, this really cool aha moment in the coaching session. It was really cool when we were sitting there talking and I realized, you're shooting for bullseyes. And just like most times, just accidentally stumble on cool breaks for when we're talking about, we're looking within. Yeah. And, and I realized, wow, like how are you going to be able to move forward if you're pressurizing everything around the goals and come up with an idea? It's like, I think maybe you shoot for a target versus a goal. Now, you, re- you obviously remember that coaching session together, right? Absolutely. absolutely. So wh- why don't you share, because I think most people are similar why don't you share how that, what that's all about, what it means to you, and yeah. maybe look back a little bit. Uh, well, I, when we kind of did that, like, it, um, the, the beautiful thing about our coaching sessions, and I think we figured this out really early on, even before I joined the session, when you just like really called me on my bullshit the first time that we met for coffee. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like, I'll never forget this. And, you know, I had just had our daughter and she was about two months old and then brought her to the coffee shop to meet you. I'm going to backtrack a little bit more even. And um, I was really, I was like, oh, can I do this? I don't know. I like, you know, set myself up with like excuse after excuse and like roadblock after roadblock. And I was self-sabotaging and it was self-sabotaging at its like finest, right? Where, oh, I'm a solo parent and my husband works out of town. Like I'm, I got two so You felt kids. like you were giving, you were giving a lot of excuses to. Oh, I was giving roadblocks. myself full on okay. permission to like, you know, deny myself this opportunity for growth and. Yeah. Um, All the reasons right? why it wouldn't work. Exactly. A hundred percent. So, but you looked at me point blank and you're like, did you brush your teeth this morning? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, did you get dressed this morning? I'm like, yeah. And you're like, there's your priorities. And I was like, got it. Check. Yeah. You obviously, you obviously, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I think that's what, yeah. Like you're, yeah. I remember that you were hard on yourself and saying stuff like, you know, like, like, it's almost like, yeah. a, like, you, and it's like, well, you're, you, you, I just don't, I don't stay organized or I don't, whatever. I'm like, well, you, you, you I didn't have time and I had to, that's kids right. And you just had a baby. That's right. And I'm like, well, you get dressed every day. So yeah. you seem like you can consistently do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Just, right. It, it's, it's like, that's like the most yeah, I, moment, like, ever. I was like, okay, got it. Check. Let's do this. And, you know, even as we, you know, went through the coaching process, I remember like, you know, she was in her high chair in my office while we were doing our zoom call. Yeah changing diapers on the ground (laughs) such a good story right and like but that's like that's the work that's the mom time hustle that's the the mom entrepreneur hustle like this is what we do so but the day that we kind of came across this epiphany um you know and it was all of that it was it was my own pressure for setting my daily tasks and i was hyper focused at that time um on creating so much busyness and trying to hit so many targets because because I had to get it done because I was the only one doing it and I was the only parent around and I wanted to be successful at work and I wanted to be successful with the kids so I over focused on my task list yeah and it was a survival method really so did you feel like the task list so it became the ultimate north star like if this task list doesn't get done and what was the cost of trying to attack this task list the way you used to like what was the cost of that i was exhausted 
I was exhausted. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't as good of a parent as I probably could have been, you know, during those early years um, yeah. of our daughter. Like our son is five years older, so he was in school by that time. Um, but, you know, it was just, I remember putting the kids to bed and I would go back down to the office and I would finish up what I didn't get done that day. And yeah. then anything I didn't get done would roll over to the next day, you know, and it, it just got to be too exhausting. Like I just, I never gave myself permission to kind of relax and. And then what about connection? Like, was that even on the table? Like, it's just almost like get her done, get her done, get her done, get her done. I have to get this done. I think when we're focused on a, achieving the goal more than what we really want, which is connection, like yeah. we want connection. We want to be happy, fulfilled. We want to like, but then we get so stuck on, you know, cleaning up that one list. Yeah. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Absolutely. Like every day I wanted a hundred percent those tasks done, start over fresh the next day. And like when there was stuff that I had to slide to the next day that didn't get done, I was like, Oh, like there's, there's all of this stuff. I so did you feel have... like a failure that you didn't complete that? Um, what was going not on? so much a failure, but like, I think internally I was just like, I started to harbor resentment um, mm -hmm. for my circumstance and that was really something hard to shake Interesting, because oh if my husband was home I would be able to get more done but I'm doing all of this by myself and you know like it was a really really sort of it's almost um, like what we what I I don't like saying it but how I called you out the first time it's almost like we all have a shadow, right? Totally. Some people just get mad. Some people get quiet. Some people overeat. Some people go to drugs. Like we have a shadow. Everyone has a shadow. And, and, and it's so easy. And victim is a really ugly word, but it's something we all wrestle with. Mm -hmm. And being a victim of mm -hmm. the circumstances when really you have way more control than, than you thought. And I think that's what I'd constantly throw back at you is like you actually are in more control than you think. Like you're not having anything done to you. No. The thinking behind that would literally, I think that's where anger gets produced. 100%. It's like 100%. anger, it's like, and then it's that resentment. And it's like, if you just owned your situation as that you're creating it, that's pretty harsh to say, but, but then you're like, okay, once I own it, I can fix it. I can fix it. I'm but if you can't fix it, you're a victim. Yep. So that's a really interesting thought. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, it is so easy, I think, um, for us as people, you know, to fall into that victimization. I think it is such a slippery slope that like, once it kind of like burrows into your subconscious a little bit, I think it's so easy yeah. for people to stay there. And it takes, you know, kind of an ass kicking to I know, hey, take it's yourself like it out of it. And, and it's work, totally. like it is work to get out of that. And it is work to consistently stay there. Out it's of funny. It. It's funny when you like, last thing I want to do is ask kick anybody. But the thing is, I think what's happened in this world is everyone is so politically correct that it gives that enables you just to, no one will ever challenge you on your shit yeah. because it's not nice. That's not nice. Or, or it's a deep sense of insecurity where I want someone to like them, me all the time. But what about just speaking your truth? And that that's, it's really a really cool little micro lesson because that's where I've become very successful as a coach, but it's also very uncomfortable because I'm watching you talk before and I'd be like, I got to tell her the truth <laughs> or, or my own truth just to kind of see. And that's where, that's where some of the greatest breakthroughs in the world is to have someone that's willing to take you on. Yeah. And that's what, you know, I'm same way. I'm a strong dude. Like yeah. I've had, it took me a lot of years of challenge to finally get through to me because, you know, I got her done. I'm a performer. Yeah. I can get it done. Oh, I'll figure it out. Totally. I don't need you. I don't need your help. Yeah, you know, I'll yeah. figure it out myself. And so I think that's a really cool lesson. It's like, you call it an ass kicking. I just think that it's when, if we could surround, here's the other thing. We could surround ourselves with people that give us truth. But a lot of times we don't want to. Yeah. There's people that want to coach with me and I'm they're like, no, I'm like, yeah. they're not ready. I think it's right? also like really important to acknowledge though too, you know, when you are delivering those moments of truth to people that you're helping, you know, it's it's something that I learned a long time ago, you know, when I was coaching swim club. Um, you know, one of my parents told me, they were like, you have this really great ability to, you know, deliver constructive criticism, but like, you know, iron way. fist, satin glove, right? 
So it's got to pack a punch, but it's also got to be in, you know, the verbiage and it's got to be the, the words that you're choosing when you're delivering that message is so important. Right. Um, like I see it, I see it a little bit different in the sense of like, like being careful is not my concern. It's, it's that if I'm moving out of empathy, no matter what I say, it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So it's less about like, which words do I choose than speak my truth, wherever the cards land, they land, but I'm motivated yeah. by my empathy toward your situation. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that are just look like speaking truth people, but they're just angry yeah. or they're judgmental. Like, come on, yeah. get your act together. I'm going to speak the truth. You know, like that's not. So I think, I think what you're, I, I think less of an architect did like, I don't know. I just know what I feel. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I just feel like, oh my goodness, she's holding herself back. So that's empathy. And I'm like, shit, I gotta, I gotta give her what I see. And then I just literally put a mirror up and, and sometimes it goes good. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it, sometimes Aaron, it takes a good spunk. Like, and other times it is very, so I think there's a, there's a sense of like, as long as it's coming from a really good place, I don't think you can fail with truth. True. You know what I mean? If, and, yep. and so I yep. think people don't, the people that don't really want the truth, see what I like is I like to be able to say, can I have permission? Like I even asked you today before the podcast, I said, how are we? Are we cool? If I just like, if we, if there's something you say, are you cool with me challenging it? Totally. And you're like, yeah, totally. Cause of our relationship's good. Yeah. The, the reason why I ask permission is that's the key. Like, I'm not just like, you're not a coaching client of mine. Yep. We're friends and you're yep. an alumni of the program. So I don't treat it. It's like, Hey, time to coach. But if there was a moment I could challenge and I felt it in my heart, I wanted permission. Yeah. And I think by establishing permission with people like, Hey, can I just speak freely? Can I just, sometimes when I'm on stage giving a presentation, I'll even say right in front of the crowd, can I take you on? Totally. I'll like, I'll give them the expectation or can I hit you between the eyes? Like I'll literally say it in a way where they know what's coming. And then if they say <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. And Hey, free, free, free reign. But if they say no, then I don't. So it's yeah. almost like that too, right? Like making sure there is some sense of permission mm -hmm. as well. So absolutely. Yeah. So if you were to sit back and be like, okay, you were going to give some advice to a mom. Okay. Yep. That does, that has to mom and build a business. What's give them some advice, Aaron? Like that is your, your demographic. <laughs> you've, you've, you've fought some good battles and you've overcome so much. I think it'd be cool to hear what you, what advice would you give moms and people that have like two jobs and just have to work hard entrepreneurs starting a business? Absolutely. Um, it's really um showing my kids what grit and stick to uh really looks like um because nobody grinds harder than an entrepreneur right so especially true. in the early stages of what they're doing um and you know when i went back to work into real estate after having our son you know my husband said i don't want you going back to work for somebody else and i didn't really want to either yeah um so as a mom, I think we, we get so caught up in trying to do everything for everyone. And I'm still guilty of it, right? Yeah. I, from time you got self-awareness around it, which but, is huge. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? It's just when you don't see it, yeah. that's the trouble. Oh yeah, right. Um, but I think, you know, as a mom, I think, you know, there's, there's certain things that you can do every day that's going to make you feel a tremendous amount of success. Mm. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we talked about too during that coaching was the the use of the word should and should oh, yeah that's right yeah you said that a lot i, I it's funny i've coached so many people i forget yeah. about those intricacies i'm I so glad we're talking that's so good and wow by using the word should yeah. in your your self talk and your you know all that kind of stuff you're really setting yourself up for so much failure because it's setting yourself up you know, for all the things you should be doing, because this is what people think I should be doing, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I, I really had to stop using the word should in my vocabulary when I so talk good. to myself, right? It's like not shooting you, all over myself. Like, it's funny though, if you think of it, like, so we can look at it logically, like the word should, which is really mm -hmm. good. But what about, mm -hmm. how does that word feel? 
you know, like, you know what I mean? When cool. we, like, it's almost like if we could doubt, because there's like certain person- icky obligation word. Yeah. So if we could ask Ooh. ourselves what each word feels as yeah. we say them, I think it's a really great practice to really say, like, listen to your words is one thing, but if you can feel your words, I think that's when that beautiful gut, the heart, the, the voice of God, the intuition, whatever that is for someone, if you can feel your words, you think you can have insight. But if we think our words, they're just, yeah, we shouldn't do that. But the thing is, what if it feel like, and it just creates such, like, you're like, yeah, like that's a different expression than going, like, it's really cool to understand, to feel what you say. <laughs> yeah. And then it can guide us, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's amazing. I love that you're sharing that. Yeah. Well, that, and, so that was, a, it is. And I think, you know, between, you know, hitting your targets, right? Like, you know, just set your targets. You don't have to get everything done, right? So if, give your if, permission not to get it done. Give your permission not to get things that you thought you should get done, yeah. not be done, right? Like yeah. they go so hand in hand. And, you know, if the laundry didn't get done today, then so be it. Like, what's the worst thing that happens? You got clean clothes totally. for tomorrow, you got underwear totally. for tomorrow. Great, right? Just because you said Tuesday was, you know, your laundry day doesn't mean it has to get done that day. <laughs> well, if it doesn't, I promise. I love it. I feel, right, like, like, I feel like when it's almost like a picture of someone having to go pee really bad yeah. and, and living life under that pressure, how good are yeah. you with relationships and accomplishing things when you have that much pressure constantly? Yeah. Like I got to pee, I got to pee, I got to pee. Like you can't yeah. even think straight because you yeah. got that dumb thing you got to do. Like, it's almost like just, just go stop, relax, get mm -hmm. yourself in order and then come yeah. back to work. And if you don't get it done perfectly, it's like, just move forward, right? Just move forward with it. Yeah. Just and that's the other thing. And that's what you, you actually brought that up when we were, we were talking before. Yeah. Like the message is to move yeah. forward. I think you, what were you saying about that? Um, I think when, again, it, this is all kind of tethered back to like what my message would be for like entrepreneurs, right? Women who want to do entrepreneurship businesses. Yeah. It, if you have a goal and you have your vision, I think that's so important. Um, but I also feel that it's so important for you to not necessarily have to have it completely mapped out perfectly, like step by step by step by step by step, and then micro step by step by step by step, right? I think it's okay. And I think you need to give yourself, again, permission, no matter what happens during the day, take a minute and kind of reflect on, did I move forward to get me to that end goal today? And if the answer is yes, then that's good. But, but not how much forward, just forward. You just have to keep going. You just have to keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, like it doesn't matter if, you know, say for example, you know, you said, oh, I'm going to call five prospects today, but you got to one because, you know, shit happened. That's okay because you still moved forward. You still called that one person. And, you know, sometimes if you call too many, then, you know, you kind of get lost in what, what you're talking about or whatever, right? Whatever. Or, whatever it's okay did you have a good connection with that one person fabulous that's a big win or like yeah, you went deep rather than wide totally which is, and which is way better for business anyway absolutely or like you know one thing i'm really guilty of is you know when my kids are only in school for like half day i'm like okay i've got three hours to do all this stuff wow. this, this, yeah. this is like, right hold on hold on take a minute and see what actually has to get done today and what can fall to the wayside Right. Because I think we're all guilty a little bit of over planning and, and over, like, over expecting and over expecting. <laughs> like right? I can kill all this today. And if you don't, it's like, Oh yeah. So would you say letting go, if we'd summarize something in that it's, it's like how important it is to let go. Let go of expectations. Totally. So then if, if you live life without expectations, how does your life look like? If you let go of living your life with expectations, um, I, I think we all, I think it's easy to get um, confused by expectation versus vision. Does that make sense? Yeah, explain it. Sounds cool. Okay. So vision, like, you know, my vision of my life is I want my children to be happy. I want my children to be well-rounded. I want them to be empathetic. I want them to be kind human beings, you know, and my vision is that, right? Or my vision is I want to be successful. But expectation, I find, again, it's one of those like feeling words. Expectation just takes the fun out of building the vision. Wow. 
Does that Hold make on. sense? Let's say that again. There's something <laughs> that's like sometimes things slip off the tongue and they're not thought through. That's because they come from the gut. Yeah. Expectations ruin the fun. Out of building your vision. Out of oh yeah, building your vision. Yeah. Really cool. Sounds like a t-shirt to me. <laughs> I'll send you the copyright. <laughs> nice. No, that's really cool. I think that's really interesting. So, so if we have a big vision with expectation, maybe it's not as fun to build. No, right? Like, I just think it has it's to cool. get real organic. And I think it, you know, you have to feel really good about, you know, the, the flow of how you're executing it. And I think, you know, if you're a creative person like myself, I think the second that you put an expectation on yourself, it becomes an obligation and it stops being a love. It's really powerful. That's really powerful. I love it. So Aaron, we have been on some pretty awesome. Uh, we had a, we had a retreat we went on. Yes. I would love for you to look back at that because we do these, these uh, retreats. I, when you were in the, when you were in the, the group, we did one a year. Yes. Uh, oh, actually, no, we did two. Actually, we did. We did was was one was more of a workshop, and then the one was a retreat. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, um, can you talk about going away, looking within? How important is that to say small business owners, real estate agents? Like, did, like, I think if we. I think what I'm saying is, I think it's. I'd like to hear your perspective on it because I think people sure. don't see how critical. Uh, doing that kind of work is, and I'm trying to spread that message and, and yeah. you were in it. So I'd love to hear your yeah. perspective. Um, so we went to Bowen Island just off of Vancouver. And uh, again, I, I remember it being kind of a moment of self-sabotage. Like I felt really selfish going on that wow. retreat. Wow. It, yeah. Super selfish. I was like, oh, my very God. normal, but it's just, uh, it's so wow. You know? Yeah. And, you know, like my husband took time off work to come and support me doing this. Retreat, how, you know, imagine that. How dare you have <laughs> yeah. someone take care of you and take what, three days out of 365? Oh. Like it's, yeah. it's, it just seems so foreign to just do something for yourself. You sound just like my husband when you say it like that, right? <laughs> how dare you take yeah. it out to yourself at the end of the day? And was he cool with like, supporting you with that? He is my number one fan. He's my number one fan. He's home actually right now. He worked the half day uh, so that we could record this podcast. Oh, actually. so like, cool. What yeah, a guy. Biggest fan. He's a solid amazing. human being. Totally. And, um, but yeah, so we went to Bowen Island and it was this really, really eclectic, lovely little island. It's the island you want to go to when you kind of want to forget the world exists. It's its own little so entity. Cool. There's like a beach. There's we stayed in this really, you know, cute little Airbnb sort of cottage style. It's um, actually an old. I think it was for when the shipyards were there, and they were yeah. for repairing the ships. It was like this, twelve or thirteen bedroom facility yeah. for like from the 1900s. Yeah, they had it was redone really cool. into a beautiful place yeah yeah no it was really good it was it was really lovely and um I, th I think a really pivotal moment and like the timing was really appropriate for me to go on that because I was ready to make some big changes in my business at that time I was looking for clarification should I shouldn't I do a brokerage switch at that time yeah. um you know I was looking for clarity I think and uh, I remember we did a hike up a mountain it was the second day that we were there maybe maybe the third I can't remember yeah but I remember we walked up the mountain and we were allowed to talk on the way up the mountain oh yeah yeah right and chit chat chit chat chit chat and it was great and then we went up to the top of the mountain and we all just kind of sat and um we had a little you know moment oh, oh yeah yeah and yeah and then on the way down you were like no talking yeah it's no a silent talking. walk yeah. Yep. Sound of the walk. Your favorite thing and being an extrovert. Now you're yeah, allowed to right? talk. Like, like, like this is going to kill me, but it didn't. <laughs> it was actually um, the most, the single most defining moment for me of wow. that trip. Um, just to do that self-reflection and to, you know, we talked about vis visualization and, you know, I think it was only like a 20 minute walk to down. The it wasn't road. long. It yeah. wasn't long. And you know, you you asked us to really think about again the vision. Like, what is it that we want for ourselves, mm. and what does that look like? And paint that visual picture. And you know, that was it. 
It's funny you say that, Aaron, because it's funny. I do a lot of different things and it's hearing you say that it's funny because I've had a, like, remember Warren Yeah. in our group? He said the same thing. He said that walk, like it's a 20 minute silent walk. If you look at it on paper, you're like, well, that's a big deal. He said the same thing. He said that walk was the most, most significant things he's ever done. Yeah. And it's just, it just, is that that significant that we can't even like, it's just to think about the society that a 20 minute silent walk down a mountain is life changing. What that yeah. says to me is we are desperately needed connection with ourselves yeah. Yeah. because yeah. I'm like, if that's that significant, it painted a paints a contrast of where we're at yeah. busy, busy, busy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then I know yeah. from a being, being trained in the psychology of like personality and stuff, I know so me and you might be similar when we're, when we're silent, it actually triggers a different part of our whole life that mm -hmm. we don't get to. And we're talking, it triggers another part of your personality. So for me, if I'm not in silence, I don't connect with my values. Yes. It's really, really interesting. So if I'm talking all the time, I'm hyper creative. Like you know, I come up with ideas and business strategy, but if I'm never silent, I'll never have my guiding tool, which is my values. Yes. And that's exactly it. Like, I think a lot of us create so much busyness in our lives. So we don't have to identify with those things. I think, hmm. you know, giving yourself permission to be in those quiet times and those quiet spaces for reflection, um, it puts us in a really vulnerable heart set and mindset. And I don't think there's many people out there um, who are willing to do that and who are willing to get yeah. really vulnerable with their, with their core values and, you know, whether or not what they're doing is really working for them, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's scary, right? Because yeah. it triggers change. Yeah. It holds you accountable. It's like, yeah. it's, it, but it also, it also puts a nitro in your growth. And it, and it, like, just, I think people like, I know I was like that for years, right? I don't want to see the truth. Yeah. Yep. And I think if you're quiet, like it's just, it's just like, honestly, people drink a beer every night or they have wine every day. Or like, these are other subtleties that people are like, oh, it's just a wine every day. I'm like, ah, uh, you're buzzed every single day. Or even if you don't feel it, you get used to it. Yep. What are we really avoiding here? Yeah. What are we avoiding? And that's exactly what it is, right? Like wow. if we create the busyness and we create this frenetic, you know, energy around everything that we're doing and we don't have to sit still and let life, you know, really soak in, you know, it's did powerful. I do the right things? Did I make the right choices? You know, am I in the right place? You know, it doesn't ever allow you to really feel, um, you know, what's happening in your life. Yeah. That's Aaron. It's so powerful. I love, I love that, uh, years have gone by and our alumni, like the people, like there's just this mark of like self-reflection, always checking your compass, mm -hmm. looking within relationships first, understanding what you want out of your life and then build a business to pay for it. Like there's just this cool culture and it's almost like our cool little tribe we've got. Yeah. You meet anyone that's gone through it. You always kind of know the flavor and, and I hear it in your voice and I'm, it's just one of those things. It's like so cool. Yeah. We had a really so good cool. that year. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So cool. Um, yeah, it was awesome, awesome time. So, so Aaron, what are you doing now? So you're in Kitimat. Now you're trying to restart mm -hmm. a real estate business. I know one time you told me you like design and I'm curious about what's that. A lot of times we have the logical business yep. and then we have the one we really want to do. So yep. do you have that situation right now or, or are you just really tackling real estate or what's going on? It's funny that you say that because like, I've always loved creating beautiful spaces. Um, I blogged on my website um, about the changes that we made to our primary residence back in St. Albert. Yeah. Um, Cause I wanted to love the space every time we went back home. Right. Cause we do come back quite frequently. So, you know, that love is still there, but I feel like it's kind of morphed a bit into something that lends itself um, nicer to, to my own business, like my real estate business. Um, so kind of on the radar, right. I self-taught myself, you know, WordPress website construction. Um, and that was really fun to do because now I've got, you know, this really lovely website that I look at and I'm proud of it and aesthetically oh. it's pleasing to me. So, you know, so I really started to take that creativity that I, I have, and really apply it into the marketing that I want to put out there. You know, like I, I've said this to a couple of friends and I was like, 
I'm also obsessed with like RuPaul's Drag Race, right? <laughs> Forgive me of anyone out there who who doesn't. No, know that's that, awesome. But like, you know, RuPaul is just one of those human beings out there that just like really strives to bring you know the best out of people and help them yeah. operate when they are at their best. And I think that's something you know really important, um, right? Because we all love ourselves the most when we feel our best right or when we're operating at our best so you know the version of Erin that you get when she's having a super great day that's the version I wish you could always have right yeah life is going to do something different that's like saying I wish that I could pick apples and fruit off a tree all the time yeah it just doesn't happen like there's there's growth that happens (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's like I wish I could be on the mountaintop every time that's the best person but then there's the part of like that's just the beautiful nature of human beings we go through uh, challenges, but I feel like every time that we go through a challenge, if we can picture it as if you're building muscles, like look at look at how we rip our rip our bicep, and we're excited about it. Yeah. And then finally, you get to flex in the mirror, and then you know, six months later, you look look at that. It's like it's we expect ourselves just to have that mirror experience where you're flexing in the mirror, just eating that beautiful fruit. But ninety percent of the other part is growth. (laughs) It's true, right? So so I really tried to, you know, over the last six months, um, really create an aesthetic that is really, um, you know, in tune with who I am. Um, So like everything that I put out there, and I said, yeah, I said to to my friends, I said, if it's not as tight as RuPaul's drag, it's not good enough. You know, (laughs) like, it's gotta be tight. It's gotta be amazing. It's gotta go out there and be, you know, beautiful. And it's got to showcase, you know, what you can do, right? It's it's yeah. one of those granular, those one one of those teeny tiny steps that you can take, right? What you're putting out there just has to be really neat and tailored because if you're going to take the time to do a Facebook post or you know a picture or whatever, right? It doesn't matter what it is, but if you're going to take the time to do something like that really well, it's just going to create like this beautiful, beautiful mountain of everything done well from start to finish. And I think- I'm, I'm in trouble then because I'm pretty <laughs> rough around the edges and I got stains on my shirts and- <laughs> But not when it really counts, Ben, not when it really counts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Aaron, just for the record, yeah, I think that a real estate designer in a 10,000 or 15,000 person town is genius, by the way. I don't think, I think I wouldn't give you any advice like that in, in Edmonton or in New York City, or I think it's too much. But when you have a small community to be able to do a combination, I truly believe that's doable. And I think it'd be amazing for your brand if you, if you literally started like not just staging, I'm talking like you come in and maybe, maybe talk to someone, like do some design work. Like, like I literally would create two or three options for you and have like a, two or three options where someone can hire you as a straight designer. Oh, by the way, I can sell your house. I think in a small town, I truly believe that. Now, when you go and do a design work and you, and you create that piece of art, how do you feel? I love it. Like you just alive, out. right? Yeah. Because yeah. the feel that comes with repurposing a space or, you know, doing something with that space you know i just think it just it creates a whole different energy in it right yeah i've been known to pull people's passions out and turn them into businesses I mean, james was a videographer and he says ah, i couldn't just do that i'm like man when you when i can see that in in james's eye remember we both know james a videographer he's probably makes i don't know three hundred thousand dollars a year doing what he loves now and he travels yeah. all the world yep. and does all kinds of cool stuff and i remember when he i talked to him say that's kind of a similar feeling i get with you where it's like huh i'm like you got like i don't just pull that out of everybody i'm just like you know what just wanted to put on record forever on this podcast <laughs> that just so you know, I think there's a real, real move there. You would just feel your, feel your energy every day doing something you love. And then you sell a house. It's, it could be a really exciting, very unique model. And, and uh, I remember James, when I told him the same thing, I said, man, you need to be videoing. I said, and it's, I don't have any like connection to like, oh, you got to do what I say. I just saw the passion he has in his videoing. He was cutting trees, doing arborists. You can't make money at that. And whatever we do in our head to hold us back. So I just know that I've got a relationship with you. And I think I know you and maybe you'll, you'll just challenge yourself to maybe lean in because there's some passion there for real, Aaron. Yeah, just make it, you know, I think it's just really important to love the space that we're in. And I think, you know, we're, as we record this during, you know, COVID-19 totally. and everything, I really feel that, 
you know, the space that you, you call your home should really be one that you love. You're doing it already. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not just going to sell your house. We're going to make this thing feel We're gonna amazing. We're going to make this thing beautiful. We're going to yeah. go room by room. We're going to tweak your bookshelves. It's going to be like hometown. I see the vision. It's see the be amazing. <laughs> like coming alive. <laughs> so Aaron, I ask, I ask a funny question. Here's, here's a, just a little shift gears here. If you were to make a scratch and sniff sticker, and what smell would it be? And what would the picture be? Oh my gosh. First, right off the top of my head, pizza. Just with the smell of pizza match, just yeah. pizza, just to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> just so you loving the pizza? Is that your thing? Oh, pizza's like my jam. Pizza's my jam. <laughs> oh pizza, man. Pizza, so where's the best pizza, pizza place? Like where, where, where's the best? Is it Domino's? Is it Panago? Okay, here, mm, you got it. What is you it? You have to go to Nova Scotia for it. You have to go to Nova okay, Scotia for where pizza. Where is this? It's Venice Pizza. Venice Pizza. In Glace Bay, Nova Scotia. Why? Why? That's a long ways to get a pizza. Like, why would it be worth it? There's, the crust is like so powdery and it's like doughy without being super gluteny. And the cheese is really like perfectly like pizza elasticized and just the whole combination of it all. It, it, um, it's crazy that, that if you think about marketing for a second... <laughs> You're on a show talking about some guy's pizza in Nova Scotia. If we could learn that business lesson, yeah. that is the what we're, yeah. like, people are always about clicks and, and all this other stuff. When the conversation right now in the world, he doesn't even know that we're on a show yeah. that goes out worldwide and talking about his pizza. Yeah. It just shows that what, make your, make your business world class yeah. first so then people just talk about you we're totally. literally branding and talking about this guy <laughs> and now all i want to do is go look this guy up and see yeah. how the heck can i get to nova scotia have a piece of pizza like that's amazing i just think that's crazy we're talking about some little Absolutely. pizza shop you know and honestly though like it's it's got some emotional attachment for me right because when we were when we were little like i was born in glace bay i was born in nova scotia okay and um so we've just got a lot of history there. Like I take my kids back there as often as I it's can. Got some nostalgic value. Absolutely. But yeah, like, yeah. you know, when we were growing up and we would go home, my grandfather would go at the time, it, you know, um, we went to George's at that time, but it was like mom and pop shop, like just go in and pick it up and, you know, take it back. But he would always have a George's pizza for us when we arrived right because we loved it so much and you just can't get anything like it out here mm. and then it would be like you know the send-off dinner so we would get it twice sometimes three times <laughs> in a two-week vacation right wow. when we went to Nova Scotia so you know it is one of those simple pleasures that you know we look forward to every time we go back home to visit family that's cool that's yeah. really cool yeah uh, We'll have to keep a note of that. Maybe we can tag yeah. it on our show or something. Totally. Tag his right? pizza place. So, so we're kind of coming near time here. Yeah. I, always, I always like to put myself on the chopping block as well. Practice what I preach yeah. is to look within or, or, or even do a little coaching or whatever. But I always leave a room at the end of every show to just to pose a, you can ask me a question. Whether it would be something advice or it'd be a challenge or it'd be just smart ass, I don't care. But I just thought <laughs> I like to put myself out there as well. I'm always looking within as well and I'm always willing to help. So do you have a question for me and uh, leave it with you? You don't have to, but just uh, how I usually close out the show. If I ask you a question, what's been your biggest triumph that you feel since you've launched the agent, the business and from within? franchise like what is the what is the biggest thing that you have accomplished with that that you feel hmm you know what so I've got business from within which is my mastermind group which is what you're part of which is hands down the best thing I've ever come up with in my whole life it's the most results it's the it, I just cannot explain to you how powerful like that and how that what that does for me personally like to be able to see life transformation and business growth it's like i've done this weird combination of deep transformational work mixed with business and actually seeing companies like really grow and that is like the most satisfying thing because i think that just that's an expression of me and so when you look at something it's like it's not the accomplishment it was like holy shit actually built a business 
that I fit like a freaking glove. You know, that feeling where it's like, this is what I'll do the rest of my life. Yeah. So, so the, so the mastermind or the, our business from within community, the group, it is the coolest thing ever. It's not scalable. It's a lot of work, a lot of one-to-one -one coaching, which is not the best way to build a business scalable, but it's the most satisfying. And then I think, to be honest, the podcast is just amazing too. That's the most amazing. Get to meet people and hang out. And mm -hmm. so my greatest thing is I think this group business from within is probably the greatest accomplishment in business that I think I've ever done. And the most satisfying most, I think it comes to alignment. So I think if we were to say, how do I get that? If someone's listening going, Oh, I wish I had that thing. It takes incredible courage and balls of steel to be <laughs> laughed at, to fail, to do trial and error, and just relentlessly move toward who you are. As you develop, make adjustments. That's why I'm kind of passionate. We're like, you should probably just do some design work because, <laughs> because guys, we, like, we got one life to live. We got to be happy. We got to be fulfilled. So that's probably my greatest point of triumph, I guess you said, was, and it's the life's from that. So there's mine is, I, is that it's built around me, which is exciting. But then you look at, now it's been years, right? So you start seeing this, like when you tell me stories about, I forget, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> like it left a mark. Yeah. Like that is the coolest thing. And then you see like, remember Justin, mm -hmm. remember Adam, remember like all you, like we just have gotten so like we bring this community together and it's forever know each other. Yeah. And it's like this family, like there's so much about that. It just, it just so exciting to me. And I think that's where, uh, that's probably the greatest trumpet triumph. Awesome. So love it. So we're going to wrap up. Do you have any last things to say? Anything on your mind? I want to make sure you have a chance to say whatever you want to say. And, uh, and we'll, we'll close her out. No, I don't think so. I think anyone who is kind of in this, you know, do I, don't I sort of situation, you know, or like or they're feeling, you know, things aren't flowing the way that they want them to, you know, I think now is a really great time to, you know, just kind of sit back and really relish in the silence that's happening and, you know, get vulnerable with where you're at and whether or not it's serving you. And if it's not, then, you know, if you want to continue building business and if you want to continue all this stuff, you know, really focus on, you know, putting out heartfelt content that really resonates with you and resonates with, you know, the people you want it to, right? And just be authentically you out there. I love it. On that note, we are going to finish on that note. Thanks so much, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Really, really love that we did this together. Me too. Thanks for having me, Ben. Yeah, for sure. 